Hey, YouTube. Well, I got inspired for a topic today. I was just on the Shade Room and I saw the story about this brother DMX. I guess he's a rapper. I saw that movie, but I, I, I don't know that I've ever... I'm not aware of his music. I know he was pretty big at one point. Anyway, he's in drug program. And uh, the story read something like, he's in drug program, he's supposed to be released but he decided to stay extra 30 days. Well, good for him. Uh, so it's, it, it, it just brought back the memory of programs. So I'm gonna talk a little bit about drug programs and about the level of, of, of uh, surrender you have to reach, in my opinion, where you can actually help yourself, where you can actually get well. So just a little bit. So my thing was, Okay, I've said it many times before. I used to, be, I used to sell drugs. I was a drug addict, 12, uh, 17 years. I went to prison 10 times in 10 years. But when I decided I, I wanted to get, get clean, it's because of some act of violence perpetrated against me. You know, when I first got the idea, I wanted to get, get out of the game. I was in prison, Vacaville State Prison. Right? Now... <clears throat> I knew I wanted to, I, I wanted to, to get clean, but I know it wasn't going to be easy for me. Too many experiences with having good ideas, good plans, and then getting out and acting a damn fool. So what I did was I contacted this drug program. Uh, Vacaville is maybe a couple of hours out from San Francisco. Uh, I knew when I got out of that place, I was not going to be able to make it all the way to the drug program. When you've been locked down for a while and you're a serious drug addict like I was, when you first taste that freedom, very, very vulnerable. So I had to accept, okay, you think the first time at the radio, you've done this before and you know you are weak when it comes to getting out of prison. That is the most vulnerable. The ideals start, because I've even been releasing and plan on staying clean all the way up until the time I got on the bus to leave the place. By the time I reached where I was, the location I was going to go, I was already triggered. So what I did was I contacted this drug program who agreed to pick me up. No, I contacted Volunteers of America. They had a program there. They would pick up dope fiends and bring them to program from prison. So that's what I did. I contacted them. I needed help. I reached a point where by any means necessary, so, I uh, they picked me up at Vacaville, drove me all the way to San Francisco, two and a half hours, placed me in the program. The big thing about program, I went to a place called Walden House. The big thing about program is the support. I don't remember any magnificent things happening while I was in this. This is kind of a short-term program, 90 days, three months to be there. It wasn't that it was some magnificent thing that happened there. We went to a you know, house meetings and things like that. Mainly you had support. You were not on your own. You had to go to the store, you went in threes. Everywhere you went, you had people with you. There was a tremendous amount of support. You had a place to be. You, you, you didn't have responsibilities outside of the house. So it was very valuable to me. My experience was after I went to Walton House, I relapsed one time. The first time, and the first time I relapsed, it was because uh, that program had a, you know, if you do all the right things in a couple months, you get uh, a weekend pass. Weekend pass, right? Everything had been going beautifully. I had had no run-ins in the program, and my, my attitude was, I am through with dope. I went out on that damn program, and while I was on the bus to go to the right place, this little coffee shop in... Uh, in uh, Castro, a place where I happened to volunteer now. I've been volunteering there for 12 years. But uh, then it was a hangout for uh, people in recovery. Before I got there, I got the idea to use, I got triggered. Triggered just means something, puts your mind on dope again. Uh, it was, uh, they, they had a big fair here called the Folsom Street Fair. I went to that big fair. I was in there about a hot 30 minutes. And then I was, back to the tenderloin give me some dope that's how fast it could happen on the bus from from the 
So I don't know why they, they let us go after, uh, and I think it was 30 days with no trouble. Between 30 and 60 days with no trouble. Anyway, so I did that, and <clears throat> I think it was two more months, I was back in prison. But I didn't had not given up the idea that I wanted to get clean. So I went back and I did another seven or eight months. I did a year with half times, about seven, eight months. So then... I got out and made the same agreement with these people. I said, I will never make it to the program. They agreed to pick me up one more time. They picked me up, drove me all the way back to San Francisco, right? And I was determined. Now, for me, recovery is a spiritual matter. It's a spiritual thing. It's a point where you get to where, okay, God has delivered me. I accept it. I receive it. That means I'm not using drugs. Dope is over. Now, anybody say that, hell, you, every time you come down, you say that. But there was something different about this time. So I went, I went back to back to program. This time I finished the program. And when I got out of the program, the program was 90 days. I got out of that program, and I went into what is called transitional housing. I'm just telling you about the process I went through to get, to, to get clean. Now, I've been clean for 15 years now. Right, so after that second time in... Uh, second time I went back to program I never used again okay so I, and I don't want to talk forever I can't have no you know hour long videos so I'm going to speed right through this but my point is get what you need get the amount of support that you need while I was in program there through the counselors I decided I need to see a therapist uh, a person which we were calling then a drug counselor Got myself a drug counselor. I stayed in the program 90 days. And when I got out, I went into this place called Transitional Housing, called Baker Places here in San Francisco, here in the Bay Area. I was I lived in that place, Transitional Housing. This is These are big houses, and there are like four roommates there. No staff, just four roommates there. Cleaning some environment. The program that I went into happened to be for HIV people. This was a support system set up that way. I lived in that program for four and a half years, real years. So this is what I had to do. I had to go from one thing to another thing to another thing. This is how I made it, in, uh, in my opinion. I think I was in three houses at, at that program. I moved three times. Then uh, I went and I applied for my own apartment, some housing thing, my own apartment while I was there. And so the last house that lived in there was would would have been uh, the fourth place was uh, it, it was a transition between a housing and program joint venture between the city and the and um, that program bigger places. While I was there, I applied for my own apartment. I got myself a studio apartment, so I was on, out on my own. But that process for me was five years five years moving forward well, I got my own place and stuff like that. but when I left there now I was prepared see the first time I relapsed I wasn't prepared for anything I couldn't even make it uh, to from, from the program to the Castro I wasn't ready to be on my own it was a gradual process gradual process now it's been 15 years I've been out on my own for I was in that place for um, 10 years, something like that. Yeah, about 19 years. Anyway, so that's my story about, about recovery. It takes what it takes. I saw a therapist for five years, and now I, I happen to be uh, facilitate groups at the same facility myself. I've been doing that for a, a number of years. So everything has been slow, but you have to recognize what is it going to take to keep me clean? Whatever it takes. This brother, which I'm not talking, I'm not telling his story. I'm just saying that's what inspired me to say, okay, if he wants to stay extra 30 days, he feels like that's what he needs to do, then that's what he needs to do. And that's got to be that way all the way through. Now, I ain't thought about drugs in years. I'm serious. So I say years. Even the thought of getting high is repulsive to me. It took a long way to get from there to where I am now. So, 
Anyway, I'm at 10 minutes. So I don't want to go high. I know y'all y'all won't look if it's more than 10 minutes. All right. And that's today. <laughs> that, that is today's confession or testimony. Good luck to that brother. Uh, DMX, they said he gained 40 pounds. He was underweight, malnutrition, and everything else. He's looking good, and he's making sense. Good for him.